Thank you, Madam Chair, and, and I will echo the sentiment of my colleagues. Thank you for uh, conducting this markup, and thank you to our colleagues across the aisle for working on good policy and, and good legislation that I plan on supporting today. Uh, but I will also echo the sentiment of my colleagues. We do have to address the elephant in the room, which is the reconciliation package that is imminent. And I want to address one particular thing, and I want to ask my, my Texas colleagues on the other side of the aisle, how on earth can you vote for this? How on earth can you vote for something that's so egregious and bad policy for Texas? It's not just the energy attacks. It's not just the attacks on our oil and gas workers. I, because that doesn't surprise me. I've, I've always understood that you don't value those people. But I was always under the impression that my colleagues wanted to help the most vulnerable among us and wouldn't do something that would harm them so badly. So it strikes me as strange that we would cut Medicaid dollars for a state like Texas, simply as punishment for not expanding Medicaid. So now it gets cut to the tune of $250 million in funding that goes directly to Texas safety net hospitals. These safety net hospitals that do good quality charity care for everyone. I thought this is what we wanted. And hospitals like this system, it works better, it's more direct, it's more efficient, but we're gonna cut it? We're gonna cut the dispro disproportionate share hospital funding? And there's some backstory to this, but hey, don't worry, because at least the high earners in New York and New Jersey will get their state and local tax deductions, some of which to the tune of $36,000 in tax decreases for the wealthiest among us. So how did this happen? Well, as, after Biden took office, in order to punish Texas, they pulled the Texas uncompensated care pool waiver on some technicality. The White House did it. They blamed it on some low-level bureaucrat, but the White House did it. Luckily, the court said this is ridiculous and they reinstated it. So we got our waiver back and our low-income safety net hospitals could breathe easy and the patients that get care there could breathe easy. But for some reason, in this reconciliation package, in order to punish these kind of states like Texas, they're going to cut the dish funding. And this is what it will do to the Houston area. This is what it will do to my district. At least $23 million in cuts to the Harris Hospital System. That's our primary safety net hospital. High quality for everyone. Again, I thought that's what we wanted. It's at least $12 million cut to the Texas Children's Hospital, one of the best in the world for treating children. $12 million cut. Another $3 million cut would be to MD Anderson, the leader in cancer treatment in the world because they also provide charity care. But there'd be a $3 million cut to that. And then obviously that's, that's just a couple hospitals uh, in the Houston area. It doesn't represent the full amount, of Texas at least, which is about $250 million. This is massive, this is consequential. Without these Medicaid waivers, these hospitals will be forced to accept 50 cents on the dollar for, for, for providing care to patients with the waiver, we can increase the payment rate to our physicians and help provide better access to care than with Medicaid expansion. So I urge my colleagues, please take a look at what is in this. Please do not support something that so directly impacts in a negative way our own constituents in Texas. It's not worth it. It's not worth the politics. It's not worth this retribution against red states because it hurts the people that we represent. Thank you and I yield back.